You're listening to the Three Batter Minimum Podcast. Now, here are your hosts, Britton, Patrick, and Dylan. Hello, you are listening to episode 20 of the Three Batter Minimum Podcast here on August 18th, 2019. We started this in March. Now we're here in the dog days of summer. Um, Britton is not here today. He's enjoying the dog days of summer out in the lake somewhere. Yeah, northern Saskatchewan. Yeah. Um, he's he's not down the old town road. He is uh, <laughs> no. he's on the water. Um, a dog at sea. We got we got a message from him that he his boat motor, the motor on his boat, yeah, did <laughs> wasn't <laughs> wasn't working and they had to paddle back to shore. For like an hour and, and a it, half. Yeah, we didn't hear back from him for a good while. We don't know where on a lake they were at the time that the motors stopped or didn't work. But, um, yeah, so he's having some fun outdoor time out there. And he's not here to tell us, to remind us that we are a baseball podcast. So this could go off the rails at any time. It could go off the rails real quick. Keep um, Stay on your toes because we don't know. At one point we might be arguing about, who knows, breakfast cereals. Pizza, <laughs> Lord knows what. Um, we'll start off, give a shout out to the Regina Red Sox, who uh, the WMBL, I think that's the acronym for the league, Western, Western Major Baseball Major, League. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sounds yeah, good. that sounds right. The Regina Red Sox, they made it to the finals. Feels like they're in the finals frequently. I think they're a pretty good yeah, team. I think they do that. Um, they were in the finals against the Okotoks Dogs. I'm not sure if it's like dogs, like D O G or like D A W G. I hope I it's think, not DAW. I think it might be, and that that does make me pretty mad. And Okotoks did win two nothing in the best of three series. But shout out to our hometown Red Sox for you know being a being, being a strong there. contenders hey, every year. Yeah, you gotta love it. Um, let's talk about the real Red Sox, the Boston Red Sox, and Chris Sale, who is on the ten day DL with left elbow inflammation. Yeah, um, I. I want to go back to episode one. I feel like I called this. I said yeah. the guy throws like a meat meathead, and uh, we're going to see his his arm eventually fall off. This is his arm falling off. I think he's visiting uh, James Andrews. Even yeah, yeah, that's uh, the doctor. You know, that's that's the Tommy John guy. So yep. not saying that the, that's it, but obviously he has to look at some things here. Um, yeah, I he's mean, he's probably done. You, you, the Red Sox are you know. They're not looking good to make the playoffs at this point. The Rays and the Yankees keep winning. They're not slowing down at all. Um, yeah. You you've just signed Sale to a massive extension. Which does that kick in? That doesn't kick in until next season. Yeah, I think it kicks in next season. So you just you protect the asset. You yeah, shut him down. It's not worth it. I like he's a competitor. Whatever. Um, he's got a bunch of strikeouts this season. Yay, wahoo for you. But really, he he yeah. hasn't done what you pay him to do. Um, I say you you shut him down. You hope he can figure it out next year. Um, you hope that there's not a long term injury in there. Shut him down. Elbow injuries are sketchy with pitchers, so just yeah, shut him down. No more Chris Sale. Uh, this is the the Chris Sale becoming a piece of crap season. And uh, just like to say, you heard it here first. Obviously, not celebrating the injury. We never want to do that, but uh, I, I am celebrating being right. Yeah, exactly. Um, another injury. Well. Not maybe not a big injury. Vlad Jr. is having an MRI on his knee, uh, presumably today or tomorrow. This happened yesterday. He was um, uh, he was trying to snag a ground ball and he hurt his knee, tweaked it a little bit. Montoyo says it's precautionary mainly, um, but you know Jays are having a nice little run here at the end of the year, playing pretty well with the young guns. You probably want to see Vlad finish the year. Uh, Vlad's been super hot lately, so yeah. this sucks for Dylan, who's trying to fight for a playoff spot. Dylan's also going on a trip to see the Jays in a couple of weeks. Oh, so no. Hopefully, he's going in about 11 days, so okay. I, I imagine Vlad's good by then. Um, I don't think it's going to be a big issue. Maybe they get him off it for a few days here, but I won't be surprised if this brings out some, uh, some of the media saying, oh, is Vlad fat? Do we need to get Vlad losing weight? Do oh, we, God. you know, are we going to put him on uh, keto? Get Vlad in ketosis. Vlad ketosis twenty twenty. Um, yeah, I feel like this is going to bring around the weight issues again. I don't think wow. the weight really related to the knee. Uh, obviously, you know, he's he's eating pretty good. He's eating better than he does on the 
two hundred bucks a, a yeah, week in I mean, AAA. <laughs> so. Not, um, he's not living on ramen noodles, instant ramen anymore. So yeah, so he's got to be doing better. Um, yeah, obviously better trainers at the big league level, lots of things like that. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. Um, I imagine Brandon Drury's sitting here uh, playing third base today. That's my my son. I think I know this girl in the first row. Kind of looks no. Maybe We're watching not. the Blue Jays game right now for those uh, interested. Um, is this in Toronto? Yeah, this this in Toronto. Yeah. We got Wilmer Font on the bump. Uh, he's probably going to pitch the first couple of innings here. I think they can stretch him out to like 60 pitches. Uh, obviously, Wilmer Font was acquired by the Jays from the Mets earlier. Yeah. Also, I want you to see. So, look, when they bring it back, there's a guy in suspenders, red suspenders, kind of looks like Santa Claus. He's just going to town, going to town on this burger. Uh, oh, and that is Brandon Drury playing third there. Um, yeah. But anyways, guy going to town on the burger. Anyone watching the Jays broadcast or if you have MLB.tv, maybe go back to the first inning. Find the Santa Claus guy in the, the red suspenders. Uh, watch him chow down on, on a good burg at the ballpark. Uh, probably going to be the most entertaining part of, you know, two bottom-feeding yeah. teams uh, going against each other. Here. So yeah, you see Where's our it? red suspenders? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you just wait. He's, yeah, it's a short. It's, 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 on it's a it. short beard, but he's got like a summer Santa vibe going here. Yeah, and he's just smashing yeah. this burger. I hope. I hope he brings it back. Anyways, um, the biggest news. Well, two. I'll I'll bring some smaller Yankees news, but then the biggest Yankees news after that. So, uh, Gio Urshela over this last month, nine home runs, twenty one ribbies, a four forty seven average, and a two four seven WRC. Plus, yeah, he's he's tops in the in the league in average at WRC plus over the last month, uh, just like absolutely just tearing the cover off the ball. Um, I, I think like eight home runs was probably his max before this season. He just yeah. had nine the last month. Yeah. He's close to twenty or more on the year. Uh, he was former J, former Cleveland Indian. Totally not what you expect. Uh, this is shocking. I forgot Gio Urshela was a Blue Jay. Yeah, for a short, sad yeah. time. Like, it was just like, why do yeah. they have this guy? You know, he's just there to... Yeah. Um, Here's another tidbit for you. Right now, up to bat for the Mariners is Austin Nola. I was reading an article this morning about that, um, about the Jays game yesterday and about uh, Vlad Guerrero's injury, and it had said that uh, Vlad Guerrero Jr. was chasing a ground ball from Aaron Nola of the Mariners, wow. and I thought that's not that can't be right. Is there an Aaron Nola in the midst? Austin Nola? It's, it's his it's, brother. It's, it's his brother, and he's doing he's hitting three ten. Hitting three ten. Yeah. Uh, so that's hitting great. Hitting third. He's got first and second eligibility for you fantasy people. Uh, if you need to pick up a guy that has the second base eligibility, first base pretty deep. So I yeah. can't imagine you need to play him there. But uh, yeah. Pick him up. Could do something good for you. Um, so, yeah, Gio Urshela been good. But, really, the the, the story of the Yankees, um, cover your ears, young children listening in the car. Um, we obviously know Aaron Boone has already said that uh, his guys are fucking savages in the box. Yeah. Um, so, again, Aaron Boone comes out after uh, Cam Maben strikes out. He comes out because he gets – he's yakking at the ump a little bit. Ump tosses him. Aaron Boone goes out. As soon as Aaron Boone leaves the dugout, uh, Brett Gardner says, you know, I need my my trusty steed, which in this yep. case is his bat, and he just starts slamming on the top of the dugout again. you, you got to watch the gif, like the video on this. Like, go down to cut four. It's 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 on there. All the good MLB gifs are on there. And, like, just he's just giving it to the top of the dugout. Like, it's inexplicably. Um, and, of course... He gets booted, too. Yeah, he gets booted, and then uh, I think it was, like, the first base umper, the crew chief, comes over and is like, hey, you're gone, he's throwing him, and then he, he gives the action of him yeah. uh, bumping his bat up at the top of the dugout. And so that happens then, yeah, CC Sabathia gets tossed. Uh, you see Austin Romine poke in to... Uh, to the video a little bit and he just walks away he's like man i want no part of this like don't kick me out too um and then brett gardner after he gets thrown out and yells a little bit more um goes out on the field yells at the umps then he goes back and he grabs his bat again and you know gives her a couple more just for good measure so this is i think the third time in the last month that he's got kicked out uh six career ejections I got to imagine like at least four of them are just for hammering his bat on the top of the dugout. Um, 
lots of different takes here. Do you think? Do you think he's a child for it? Do you think he's just a big man child, or what? Um, what do you feel? I mean, I you could call him a, ch- a child for it. Sure, I think it's quite funny. Uh, just because it's such a, it's a. But the children are watching. Oh, I don't give a shit about the kids. Like they're, I mean, the ki- what? This is the worst thing the kids are gonna see, like on TV or anything. I mean, that's. Well, so that this is the thing for me too. Like, I thought it was. I think it's hilarious, but um, of course, Barstool Sports, you know, provocateurs. Yeah. Um, Jerry Carabas, uh noted Red Sox fan. Um, he's saying, you know, Brett Gardner's a scrub, he's a child, all these other yeah, things. And then people are replying with gifts of David Ortiz, like smashing a telephone, right. smashing gate. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, so I think that's yeah, a worse look for the his kids. His analysis wasn't tainted at all by being a Red Sox fan. Yeah, so I mean, we yeah. we see guys go nuts with bats. We saw uh, Big Dick Rick Porcello break two TVs, yeah. hammering his fists on those. So um, I think this is way more lighthearted. And then uh, basically the analysis from Gardner is just like, hey, I, I'm trying to do anything to get the boys fired up. Yeah, and I love it. So you know what? Show me like thousands of little league players slamming their bats on the tops of dugouts, and then maybe I'll say, you know, Brett Gardner should cool off a bit. But yeah, until yeah, that make happens, a statement. yeah, um, yeah, until that happens, keep uh, keep hammering away, Guardy. I guess uh, I want to see where it is in the rule book that he can't do this. Yeah, uh, I want to know. Yeah, um, it's pro- it's probably there, but I want to know where it is. So MLB, get at us. That's there's probably some vague wording or something. Yeah, it's going to be in there after yeah. next year, though. Yeah. Um, moving on to the AL Central, the Cleveland Indians are two and a half back of the Minnesota Twins and one game up in the wild card. Um, looks like we're going to see a three horse race for the wild card. Uh, it'll either be Cleveland or Minnesota, which everyone doesn't get first in the AL Central. And then the Rays and the A's. Um, should note, uh, we're going to note this a little later, but we'll say it now. Uh, the A's are six and a half back from the Astros right now. So maybe, you know, stranger things have happened. There's a chance. The Gary Astros Cole have hasn't pitched trade. in like a week. Yeah. So. You never know. Um, yeah, that's possible. But so we'll see. Uh, speaking of Cleveland still, Carlos Carrasco, Cookie Carrasco, uh, he's throwing from a mound. He's going to get some work in the minors, but it's looking like he'll come back like an inning at a time, couple innings maybe. So fantasy relevance, uh, not really seeing it. Obviously, that's not really what matters here. It's just nice to see the guy pitching again oh, yeah. uh, with his, his battle from leukemia. It's also just a weird update to see all the time, like in the in brackets. Like yeah. They always have like hip or whatever. And yeah. Then, Leukemia, like lots of. Um, I know Jet from our league brought it up the other day that it's just a really weird update. Like, yeah. But I remember it too. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, Chad Bettis, when he had uh, cancer for the Rockies a couple years ago, they were giving those Every updates, t- yeah. but it's just like. Strange. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Mitch Hanniger, if they've put uh, testicle in brackets there. <laughs> so, probably just groin. groin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, moving on, Lucas Giolito. He's been very good. Dylan dropped him earlier this year. He was picked yeah. up by other Dylan. Other Dylan. Lesser um, Dylan. I've I've tried on a few occasions to get uh, Lesser Dylan to trade Lucas Giolito to me. Not happening. Um, he had 11 Ks uh, in Anaheim, which is obviously a very good night for him. Um, he was part of the LA-based workout group with Tyler Skaggs in the off season and had his number on his hat during the start. So, uh, big night for Giolito. It's good to see. Yeah, he's having some feels. Uh, I have a quick update about Vlad Jr. Oh, here uh, we go. Uh, MRI on Blue Jays rookie Vladimir Guerrero Jr.'s left knee shows inflammation, but uh, nothing major. He's out of the lineup, but day to day. So, uh, Dylan, hopefully, get to see him in uh, a couple weeks' time. Less than that, he should be. Um, that you know, they'll rest him for a little bit, and uh, yeah, they'll, he'll get to see Vlad. Yeah, I think he'll. I think he'll be fine. So that's good to see. Uh, next up in the Central, you know, we don't talk enough about the Detroit Tigers, <laughs> and uh, why we don't is they are thirty-seven and eighty-three on the season. So I wanted to do a little fun game here together, and it's uh, it's just a look at their depth chart. So gonna pull that up and uh i was talking to nate last night we should have actually brought him here today um talking to him and he's like yeah they're basically just fielding a minor league team here so yeah uh they're starting nine who is d lugo i was gonna say the same thing i was like you know what i don't know this lugo guy d. i know lugo. i know i know nico goodrum 
D Lugu is Dawell, D A W E L, Dawell, Dawell, Dawell Lugo. Dawell um, Lugo. We got uh, Jody Mercer, uh, Nico Goodrum. Hey, we know Nico at least. Yep. B Dixon, Brandon Dixon. Um, we got uh, Travis Dermody. Uh, he's been playing well. I think he yeah, can play in field as well. Yeah. Uh, who's this? Is this Victor? Victor Reyes? And then. I don't know who H. Castro is. Harold Castro. Oh, yeah. Okay, Good so heavens. then behind the dish, they got John Hicks and who's Jay Rogers? They got Jay Rogers. Jake Rogers. And then, of course, uh, Miggy Cabrera is their DH rotation. Matt Boyd, Stephen Turnbull, Daniel Norris, uh, Drew Verhagen, Edwin Jackson Ed, is hey, now there. Former Blue Jay, Edwin Jackson. Former, uh, name a team that he hasn't played for. <laughs> it's like a 50-50 chance. Yeah. He's played for half the league. So, um, And then Jordan Zimmerman back off the IL. Uh, they got Joe Jimenez closing for them and a I, bunch I, of I, guys I, that I don't know. I picked up Jimenez in, in fantasy because maybe he gets a save every now and again. So even if you had the guys that are injured, if they weren't injured, like... Um, Ross and Fulmer and Jacoby Jones like and it's Heimer Candelario. Not. It's yeah, it's still not a nameable team. Uh, rivaling the Marlins for guys that you can't name. Oh, like, absolutely. I feel I feel like a, a bush league. Uh, this is our twentieth baseball podcast, and I yeah. feel like I can't even name four guys, and it's just because they have no one on there, like yeah. no one of note. So uh, we're going to move away from the team that is 46 games under 500, the Detroit Tigers. How's that? Um, looking like Detroit itself since the 08 financial crisis. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. yeah it's um, so we mentioned the Astros have lost five straight before and that Oakland, you know, six and a half back has a chance. Um, slugger on Oakland, Chris Davis. Um we talked about Gio Urshela, great yeah. last month. Chris Davis, not so great. Over the last month, one home run, three RBI, um, a 159 average, and just 27 WRC+. Plus. And you remember, like, 100 is like your, your average WRC, 100. Yeah. And he's got 27. Um, it's not looking good. A couple things here. I mean, first off, uh, my feel I have him in fantasy. So I'm thinking, you know, it's kind of the case of the Monsters, uh Looking at Space Jam, I'm thinking they, they came in. Someone took his mojo. Um, he's looking like uh, Big Crush Davis was yeah. looking like. He's like I, I imagine if you put up their two lines, I'm thinking Big Crush Davis is doing better than him right now, like in the last month, not overall in the season. Uh, another thing is, you know, it's just funny. Meacher's giving me shit about a trade. So in our yeah. league, uh, this guy's giving me the gears because I got uh, – Mini Crush and you Darvish and I traded John Means and uh, Lourdes Goriel Jr. Ooh. Both have been dropped by the guy that I traded him to, so Lourdes is on the DL right now. Might be a guy you can sneak a pickup yeah. on. Uh, I'm looking at him, so watch out. Because <laughs> um, I have Nick Ahmed playing short right now, so i got to pick that up. But he's coming back from a quad injury is Lourdes Gurriel Jr. Obviously, is hot prior to the quad injury. is kind of dwindling down. But anyways, I was getting the gears given to me, and I'm like, he's like, man, you got these two former All-Stars. And I was like, you Darvish walks like 10 guys a game. Yeah. He's been sick lately, though. So that's the gem of the trade was getting mm. you Darvish. But Chris Davis, I've changed my team name to All-Star Chris Davis because – this guy's not a fucking all-star. He's not being an all-star he's, right he's now. He's not Danny fucking Far Eadley. I will it. tell you that for free. So, uh, move on, though. Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. Jordan yeah. Alvarez is a monster. J.J. Watt says rookie of the year. Uh, maybe. Well, AL rookie of the year. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's beaten flat out for sure. Yeah. Um, so, 19 home runs, 55 ribbies in his first 52 games. Uh, we don't hear this enough because... He plays on a sick team. Yep. Uh, people just don't talk about the Astros because of where they're located, and you know you just you don't hear about him. Um, he's buried. So he he had 51 ribbies through 45 games, which actually passed a, a record that Ted Williams set at 47 ribbies through his first, 40, first 45 games. I uh, love these just pulling random stats like, oh, after yeah. four games, no one's ever done this. No yeah. one chewed eight packs of double bubble. <laughs> so uh, Big congrats to this guy. Yeah, big league chew. Yeah, that's so uh, really good, though. Oh, I think Kyle Seeger just took uh, Wilmer Font. Font deep. 
Kyle oh, Seeger also did. had a home run last night. Yeah. Uh, he oh, this one's high. That's a big one. He took it off the. Uh, I don't know if you want to call it a fair pull or a foul pull, but I call it a foul pull. A foul foul pull. Yeah. Yeah. He took it off the netting of that yesterday to win the game for them. Um, now we got up uh, Domingo Santa. Ooh, Santa is having some beers here in this game. Um, so uh, back to the pod. Uh, AL West. Uh, still talking about it. Felix Hernandez. He's making twenty seven point eight five eight million dollars this year. Uh, the thirty three year old is trying to work his way back to the MLB. Uh, I just can't believe he makes that much money to That's a lot not be in the MLB money. right now. Obviously, he's had some injuries. He's got a lot of miles. He's He's been pitching in the MLB since he was legit 18 years old, so understandable. Yeah. But it's 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 interesting the way sports works um, with money. Felix Hernandez making 27 million dollars a year. Cody Bellinger um, probably the NL MVP uh, or at least a front runner at this point, and he's making about six hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Yeah, so. him and Ronald Acuna Jr. and uh, Christian Yelich are the, the front runners for sure. Yeah, so and they're all well. Yelich, Yelich makes his like yeah. is off of a rookie deal now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Acuna Jr. signed the extension, but he doesn't get no, the he, money yet. Yeah, and yeah, Belly, um, Belly not making money either. So rough times. All right, well we'll hop over to the NL here. Um, so we've got. Couple of injuries to the Phillies pitch staff. Uh, Jake Arrieta is done for the season, having surgery to remove a bone spur in his pitching elbow. I I don't know what a bone spur is. You hear about bone spurs all the time. I think it sounds incredibly painful. I hope I never have one in my elbow. Um, If there's any doctors out there that confirm that it's super painful, let us know. And uh, relief pitcher David Robertson underwent Tommy John surgery. He's out for all of 2020. Yeah, and he's uh, 34 years old. So. David Robertson's probably it's not going to be a very relevant guy after this. Uh, he's had an injury plague season. It sucks to see. He's uh, one of the former elite closers and just elite relief pitchers of the game. Uh, sad to see. And Jake Arrieta too. I think he's kind of on his way out. Um, yeah, yeah, not not looking good there. Um, the Braves outfield is looking pretty rough. Ender Inciarte just went down. He's on the 10-day DL with a hamstring strain. Uh, obviously, Austin Riley was playing outfield for them a bit. He's had, I think, some LCL issues in his elbows, yeah, so that's, that's not, not looking great. good. Um, they just had someone else get injured. I can't remember who it is, but their outfield is looking bleak. And I think they were talking about trying to get Billy Hamilton to play for them, maybe. Oh. Um, we'll see. There's there's some moves that can be made before that second trade deadline, so they'll probably need some outfield help, the Braves will. Yeah. Um, obviously, they've gotten their pitching help. Uh, they've got a lot of young arms. Josh Donaldson's been hitting home runs. But, yeah, they're, they're going to need uh, some outfield help here. Um, Bryce Harper hit a Grand Slam walk-off, which was tons of fun. The Phillies are wearing those beautiful powder blue uniforms, which yeah. everybody loves. Um, I need to just bring this up. I saw this on Facebook. You know, some of these... And, you know, I hate, like, old people... Baseball's so ripe with old people complaining about young guys, right? And what really, really gets gets me is when young guys complain like they're old guys about young guys. And I got some friends on Facebook, some people I went to high school with, and sharing this thing after the Harper walk-off, you know, oh, why don't we talk about Mike Trout? Let's talk about Mike Trout. We need to talk more about Mike Trout. And they, you know, list his stats, and obviously all of them are like some of the best that there's ever been, but, but they're complaining that we talk too much about Bryce Harper and not enough about Mike Trout and I'm you know Mike Trout seems like a very nice guy super nice but you know what Bryce Harper is like fun and interesting that's why people want to talk about him it's I hate to break it to you but like sports media it's not always about the performance on the field no or like only about the good performance it's about personalities like the biggest players in bi- different sports leagues are the ones that are actually interesting not like pieces of cardboard <laughs> like and I, I mean like so just quickly thinking about the cfl for example uh people still mention deron carter's name even though he is garbage he's like, not he's looking good trash. This he threw a 56 yard he pass did. this week he which did. is pretty interesting um yeah but like People still talk about him because he's got 
he's, he oozes personality. Yeah, he, he's on Twitter. He's like he's all constantly you know replying to fans that are like beaking him. Yeah, um, he he's a rapper. He releases music. <laughs> like I I can't confirm if it's actually good or not. I haven't listened to life, it. but um, <laughs> like Family, that's money. Yeah. Duran. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's I don't know. Those are Duran Carter's, like, captions on Instagram. Life. Yeah. Blessed. Um, anyways, yeah, so I, I agree. Like, I don't really get why. This is usually, like, the old man argument. Like, I feel like my dad's going to make the argument of, like, ah, oh, you know, Bryce Harper, Mike oh. Trout, and just, you know, angry old man yelling at clouds. Um, yeah. I agree. There's a lot of personality that Harper has. Uh, He obviously, people pay more attention to baseball for um, the Nats and the Phillies now than they do for the Angels. Like, no one's paying attention. There's a million other things that you can do in in the Anaheim and L.A. area. Um, Like, so many other things. So, Trout doesn't, he's the best player in baseball, but... I mean, we have saw him not win the MVP every damn year. Yeah. And it's because that's how little of attention people pay. That yeah. goes to show you that the baseball writers of America who get to vote yeah. aren't even paying attention to him. Like, that's why Bryce Harper probably gets more MVP bo- votes than he actually deserves and gets more notoriety because... He's interesting. Yeah, he's interesting. He, like, right now he's not even a top five player in the game. No. And he gets more... More likes, more clicks, more follows, everything than Mike Trout because he's got a personality. So, yeah, uh, yeah get over it. And that's not a bad thing. No. That's a good thing. No, it's I, awesome. But did you see the video of the guy that, that told him, he's like, yeah, 300 million, fuck you, you're 0 and 3 or, or 0 for 3 tonight or something like yeah, that. Yeah. And then uh, he t- Bryce Harper straight up, he's getting into the dugout and he just says, go fuck yourself. Like, that's, that's what I want. I want my athletes to be interesting to you know get if you're beacon an athlete they should come back at you oh totally it's a fair game like yeah i mean you can't you can't like people just run their mouths like i'm not going to be upset if i'm if i'm the organization being like i'm not going to be like bryce you can't do that like no that was a grown grown adult yeah. he's calling out another grown adult i like i don't come to the in and out burger and tell you how to put yep. fries and in, in the the little oil cooker so yeah you know, Bryce doesn't do that to you until he comes to your in and out burger and does that. Maybe get out of his face. Yeah. Let him make his money. Um, um, move on. Let's yeah. move on from that. The Punisher out in the uh, in the NL Central with the Cincinnati Woo. Reds. Just, Woo. like, name a more iconic duo than the Punisher is the first player to hit X home runs in X games. He just keeps doing it. It's... it's I don't know what to say about it. It's so ridiculous. Just consistently, the Punisher, the Punisher, the Punisher. Uh, that's Guy's first name that we won't say. Aquino, yeah. the Punisher. Yeah. We told you uh, who he is. Outfielder for the Reds. He's now hit 11 home runs in his first like 17 games. Fastest player to do it. Um, yeah, it never stops. And one of the fastest players to hit 11 home runs in like 50 some at bats was actually Albert Pujols, the Machine. Uh. So. Elite company there. Uh, the Punisher, he's just relentless. He won't stop. And these updates are so ridiculous because it's like, okay, if he was the fastest to 10, I imagine he's the fastest to 11 to yeah. if he hits one the next night. Yeah. And, like, if he hits one today, I mean, he'll probably be the fastest to 12 unless yeah. someone had a three home run game in between their, like, it's... I don't know. The updates are kind of getting annoying. Like, I'm happy to own them. I'm not upset. Oh, no, not But at all. it's just so ridiculous. Uh Next, we got uh, – so we, we talk about the Central being a toss-up all the time. Uh, today, coming into play, it looked like this. Cardinals and Cubs tied atop. Um, Cubs have played two more games, so they have one more win, but one more loss as well than the Cards. The Brewers are a game back, and actually Cincinnati and the Punisher, uh, they're six and a half back. So It could happen. Yeah, it could happen there or in the wild card. Obviously, uh, these teams are going to sweep the wild card. It, it, it kind of looks like it, but we'll get into that more. Yeah, uh, We'll get into that more later because it's pretty interesting. So flipping on to the NL West, uh, Julio Urias, what can you say about him? Yeah, he uh, so he's, he's accepted the 20-game suspension uh, from the MLB for a domestic violence incident back in May. Uh, he was put on administrative leave where he missed five games. So five of those 20 games were served in May. He'll start serving the 15 uh, immediately. Um 
you know, I got to be honest, I'm not super well versed in, in the case and, and what came of it. Uh, 20 does seem kind of light. But again, I don't know what happened. I mean, Tyreek Hill has zero, so... That's true. Tyreek Hill has zero. Um, and we probably won't go too far into that. Yeah. Um, Ginger Guard, Dustin May... Actually, hadn't heard that nickname before. That's good. Dustin May is being relegated to the bullpen here on Sunday for the Dodgers. Um We'll see if that trend continues, but definitely hurts the fantasy value. And, uh, Dylan, you want to talk about the Rockies? I do want to tell you something. Actually, as I do this uh, little drop and add, Scott Oberg, 17 minutes ago, was placed on the DL by the Rockies. Um, so I've now picked up Wade Davis, who was dropped in our league. That's right. Um, so today's transactions, we see Scott Oberg placed on the 10-day ten, ten DL. Auxiliary, artery, auxiliary, artery, thrombosis in his right arm his pitching arm uh that's not good. that doesn't sound good at all auxiliary ax auxiliary ax ax, ax. ancillary ancillary is that is it, let's, that's totally ancillary isn't it um no that's no, not. Exi- that doesn't look like a word to me yeah a x i l axillary yeah anyways uh butchering it not not <laughs> english majors here sorry for that so um yeah what i've just done is i picked up wade davis because you know i'm just a savvy guy like that so okay. quick so i've had two closers go on the dl today uh sean doolittle also goes on the dl they've been overusing him so that was bound to happen um we'll talk about that more in the fantasy part Ginger Guard, Dustin May, relegated to the bullpen, as we said. Um, that hurts his fantasy value. Hopefully yep. he can stick with it. That hurts. Uh, the Rockies, um, oh, no. last in the West, oh, 25 dear. back of the Dodgers, 9 back of the wild card. Um, just an awful pick by me. Yeah. Horrible. And then, surprising all of us here, the Giants are 2.5 back of the wild card. Uh <laughs> I don't know when when that happened. Uh, the NL wildcard race is generally just it's it's pretty crazy. So we've got that crazy NL Central, which we're already talking about. You know, yep. the, the the Reds are six and a half back of the wild card or of the of the well of the wild card yeah. and in their and, division and of because course. they just that's just how it works there. Yeah. So then you've got San Francisco two and a half back. Arizona's only four and a half back. Yeah. So let's um, let's like we'll run it. Down. The wild card its whole whole thing here. So the Nats lead it. They're one and a half games up. Yeah. So they've got the first one. The Cubs have the second one uh, because technically the Cards since they played two less games they technically have first in yep. the division. Um, so Cubs or Cards could be there. Um, so those are the two spots. Then you got Milwaukee a game back, Philly a game back, the Mets, the Mets, the, the stinking Mets. Meet the Mets. I mean, they've been monstrous lately, but yeah. the Mets are two games back. San Fran, like, when the fuck did they get there? Right. They're two and a half back. <laughs> Arizona, another surprise team, four and a half back. They've traded away Granke, and they're still four and a half back. They're two games under five hundred. They're four and a half back in the wild card. Yeah, that's uh, Six games under five hundred. the Cincinnati Reds, six and a half back. You know, then we go to San Diego. They're seven and a half back. I don't think they're out of it. Colorado, nine games back. I don't even think they're out of it. Like, there's still baseball to be played here. Yeah. Uh, arguably, those last two teams are out of it. The Pirates uh, and the Marlins? Oh, oh, oh. oh the oh, Pirates yeah. and the Marlins for sure out. are out of it. 13 and a half and 19 and a half yeah, back. Yeah, San Diego and, and Colorado. And Colorado, like, probably, maybe yeah. there's a chance. Um, we still got some baseball left here. But, yeah, that like that race compared to the race that is essentially Cleveland, Tampa, Tampa and Oakland, uh, Boston with a super outside chance. Like, they're six and a half. And then after that, it goes 11 and a half out for the Angels yeah. in Texas. So it's just crazy to see how wide open this is. Yeah, like, it's basically, basically you have um, the uh, – I guess the Braves are pretty much, like, running away with the East now. I mean – it's it's theirs to lose at this point. Yeah, like the Nats shouldn't come back, and the Dodgers are running away with theirs, but then the Central's crazy, and then the wild card is just insane. Yeah. So I love it. I love seeing this. Um, it's it's an incredible race. It's going to be something to watch. It's going to be a fun September. Yeah. Uh, we don't have Hot or Not today. No, there's no Hot or Not right now. There's only me and Dylan, so... Yeah, it's it's we, a lot less like, fun with just the two of us. We like Britain um, and his... Counter yeah. opinions. Yeah, usually we're just right? like, yeah, we, we agree with each other. And then Britain's yeah. like, well. Um, so we'll give you a fantasy update. 
Uh, as I mentioned, I've had two closers go to the DL today. So Sean Doolittle heads to the DL. Um, and I have in the show notes here, I have no clue who you pick up to replace them because their bullpen sucks. Yeah. But then I looked a little deeper into it and I saw Daniel Hudson was getting some ads because I'm like, which relief pitcher from there is going to get some ads? So Daniel Hudson actually had a save on August 13th because they're using Sean Doolittle oh. a little too much. Uh, Dr. Doolittle has a, a knee some knee inflammation or something like that but i also think so he gave up four runs last night three home runs on 10 pitches uh to the brewers it was it was yeah. awful yeah. and um what i think there is also that he's just had so much overuse and it's because their pen has sucked so essentially they've they've fucked max scherzer yep. he's had one start since july 6th um they're screwing Sean Doolittle because, you know, they're they're just depending on their good guys a little too much and they don't have anything else and this is where they're at. So I guess maybe fantasy implications, you pick up Daniel Hudson if you want to ride that ride. He's been pretty good this year. Uh he was good as a J. But I don't know how I feel about it. I'm not I'm not picking up anyone from there for now. Yeah, I just avoid it. I think yeah, unless you're really desperate for somebody who could get a save. Yeah, but even then, there's probably better options out there. Yeah, it's it's scary. We're just going to see Daniel Hudson fall apart, poor guy. Uh, like I said, Max Scherzer on the men. He could be back late this week, so probably think Thursday or Friday. Um, he's had one start since July 6th with something in his back, I believe. Um, if the Punisher is available in your league, go get him. Go get him. Get him. He's he's owned in now 79. percent He's picked up in 21 percent in the last week. Uh, batting fourth today, 0 for 1 to start the game against big Jack Flaherty. Jack Flaherty has given up a run. He's got two Ks over two. He's been a monster lately. He has. Um, yeah, he, over his last 30 days, if you traded for this guy, you're pretty happy. Um, 31 and a third innings pitched, two wins, two earned runs, 42 strikeouts, and four quality starts. Yeah. The fact that he has given up two earned runs, well, now three, um, and, and has those four quality starts and only two wins, that's an atrocity. That is. Yeah. Uh, team should be doing better for him. So he's, yeah, he's just been a monster on the year. Um, he was sucking it up, and now he's, he's figured it out. Um, I, I Tatis think, was available in our league. We had no... <laughs> I know, I always read Tatis. Tatis was available in our league there, but he's, of course, now out. Uh, yeah, he's got a back season. issue. Yeah. Out for the season, it sounds like. That and sucks. I just want to say, there's a guy, our, our deadline was a week ago. Yep. Mitra's Mashers. Same guy that was giving me giving me grief. Um, he's He was trying to get, get rid of young Tatis Jr. And I'm wondering, did he know something? Did he? Is he in with the San Diego Padres? I don't know. Maybe he's in with a beat writer there. Maybe yeah. he is a beat writer for them. I don't know. He's a, he's an Indians fan, I think. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say yeah. here. Uh, in the show notes, we have, ooh, ooh, wondering. Nate said that last night. He's like, guy was trying to trade him. Like, yeah. do you know? Um, also, just interesting, I was looking. So this is fantasy in our league. Um, it's really interesting to note the a couple of the trades that really like I feel like Mitra would be nothing without. So um, the biggest one is getting Slam Tana and Yom Moncada. Slam Tana is like a top twenty fantasy yeah. player right now. Yep. Yom Moncada has been injured, but he was like a top forty all year. Um, and he got those for Josh Donaldson, who's picked it up, and then. Um, some like no name catcher. Oh, Mike Zanino. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So uh, it's pretty crazy, and that was like one or two weeks into the season. Yep. Um. So that I think that would make him much lower in the standings. Um. And it would probably make Nate for sure in the playoffs. So that was a big trade. Obviously, Mitra got Degrom somehow from Drayton, who's made a lot of trades. I've been a yeah. beneficiary of a lot of Drayton trades. Yeah. Well, me too. I got Mookie Betts. Yeah, from and he's played like Mookie Betts. And he's played like Mookie Betts, and Charlie Blackman's just been sort of like Charlie Blackman. And then I, I traded Kavan Biggio as part of that deal, and oh, then yeah. he dropped Biggio, and I have Biggio back now, and he's been fine for me. So. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy how that yeah. works. There, there's a lot of, like, Drayton had uh, he, Hira, Hiera. Kestin Ke- Huria? Yeah. He, who, who, Huria? Uh, I blow it Hira? every time. Huria? It's embarrassing. I follow yeah. the Brewers. They're one of my favorite teams in the league, and, yeah, I just... Kestin. Yeah, young Keston. So yeah. he dropped him, and then I picked him up, and he's been good for me. He's been a lock at second base. Um, yeah. 
there's other guys that he's yeah he oh I traded him Hendricks and then he dropped Hendricks because he didn't think he was going to keep the role and then he has kept it and he's been great um, so that was interesting but anyways back to overall fantasy um, well speaking of Drayton's team um, he has Johnny Cueto who is uh, on the mend trying to come back for those San Francisco Giants the pesky Giants that are uh, somehow in the wild card hunt uh, he's going to have two more rehab starts then he recouped the joints. Giants, the joints, <laughs> the joints. Uh, he could rejoin the joints, the giants, and uh, Harry Potter. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, so uh, nothing set in stone here, but he could be he- here to help you in fantasy. Also, Ryan McMahon uh, of the Lowly Rockies. Uh, he's looking who like who we thought he was, who he could be. Eleven for his last forty, so hitting just a clip over two fifty here uh, over the last two weeks. Eight runs, three singles, three doubles, five home runs. You like to see that when it's not just home run or single. Um, and you got those doubles in there. And then a stolen base uh, and eight walks. So looking really good. First, second, and third eligible. 44% owned. Uh, again, people probably looking the most for second base or shortstop help. Well, he can help you at second base. So uh, I'm going to recommend him there. Um Oh, I picked up Trevor Richards in a stream today. So anyone, mm. um, he was traded to the Tampa Bay Rays, and he just got called up uh, over an inning and two thirds. He's given up two runs to the Tigers, which blows. He Oof. struck out three though. So I picked him up for the strikeout upside. Mm, I don't know how that's going to work out. Um, I like to just mention a lot of guys off my fantasy team because I feel like I'm savvy and picking guys up. You're pretty savvy. Um, we'll say that. Denelson Lemay, uh, he's been pretty decent. So. Over the last couple of weeks, he's uh, pitched 18 innings. He's got two wins. He's only given up five runs. He's got 25 Ks, two quality starts. Um, that's what you like to see. Uh, Mike fulton has not been as good as, as uh, previously advertised. I'm still holding. He's 42% owned. Uh, last two weeks look like this. 16 innings, two wins, nine earned runs, 19 Ks. Like, not horrible. Um, yesterday, he did... Only go four and two thirds though, so couldn't pick up the win. But uh, guy like Fulty, you got to look for him. Um, what else can we tell you? Do you got anyone that you want picked up? Um, I don't at the moment. Um, I will say I, I picked up. Um, you know, I should pull up my fantasy team real quick. I picked up Joe Jimenez from those uh, Detroit Tigers we were talking about because he has been getting some saves um, and save opportunities for them when they are able to put themselves in that position, which is not often. Uh, but. I don't have a great staff of relievers at the moment. Um, Oof. Oof. Let's see if I can get my Yahoo Ooh, pitching, app to load. Pitching is possibly your Achilles heel here. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, you know, yeah, I've got Sergio Romo with the Twins. I was streaming Lyles yesterday. I've had Ian Kennedy for a while now. Um, yeah, it hasn't been amazing. I had I had Julio Urias, but I dropped him again because of the 15-game suspension. Um <laughs> That's yeah, pitching's not my strong suit. I see you picked up Matt Carpenter. I did, I did, I did. I was eyeing him up for a little while there. He did good for me yesterday. Had a few points. Nice. Um, you know what? If we're if we're gonna call the fantasy segment over, I have one more sports related thing that we need to talk about. Yep. I think. And this this while the 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 genesis of this uh, point comes from the Canadian Football League, I think this applies Ooh. certainly to baseball and ballpark foods. Um, but we need to talk about stadium foods. We need to talk about the Winnipeg Blue Bombers oh. Walby Burger. Oh. So for the uninitiated, uh, Chris Walby, is that his name? Chris Walby yep. was a, a, an O-lineman for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Winnipeg guy uh, for 16 years. Uh, he briefly, oh, sorry, D-line? D-line, yeah. D-line. So or No, no, O-line. Oh, well, he tackle. had a brief stint on the defensive line and at tight end in 1981. And then uh, he made his permanent home on the offensive line in 82. Um, he moved, and he was right tackle in 84, and then he stayed there for a while. He's in the Manitoba Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, worth noting, he went to college at Dickinson State, which is where I briefly went to college to play football for like two weeks. Wow. And then I left. Interesting. I yeah, didn't so, know and that. And they, they were like, oh, you're from Canada? Like, you must be a big Chris Walby fan. And I was like... All I know is that he's a big guy. Big dude. That's pretty much it. So we need to talk about the Walby Burger here at uh, I... Uh, what's their stadium called? IMG, IF... Investors Group Field. Oh, Investors Group Field. Yeah, yeah. IF... I, IGF. 
I, whatever, it doesn't matter. Nobody, it's Winnipeg, nobody cares. Um, so when you talk about the Walby burger, let's read out the, the ingredients here on this thing. Six patties, six chicken tenders, six hot dogs, six bacon strips, secret special sauce, which we know from The Simpsons is just mayonnaise left out in the sun um, from that episode where Grandpa has to get a job and work at the, the Cressy Burger. Um, it's got fries on it, cheese, pickles, lettuce, onions, and tomatoes. Um, it's $45. It's oh an obscene God. waste of food. Anyone who buys it is supporting just this... Lunacy. Months. It's lunacy. It's crazy. We don't need these things in sports stadiums. No. Nobody can eat don't. them. Just get a regular burger. Like, I saw a guy chowing down on one. There's no way that you can eat that yourself. No. I want to know, like, get me the calorie count on that. Oh, jeez. How, like, like we, we need to get that. We'll tweet it out. Maybe we'll add it up. We'll go on, like, my fitness pal, and we'll put six hot dogs <laughs> six. in and everything else that you want to put. Yeah. We don't know how much this special sauce is going to be in there. Um, yeah, it's ridiculous. Also, like, Chris Walby, 6'7", 325 pounds. Why Why are we encouraging people? Like, this guy, I think it's noted that he has, like, heart problems. Yeah. And so you name you name a burger after the guy with heart problems, which I, like, I'm not, I, I am saying this. They're likely related to eating that much and being a big guy. One might make a connection. It's absurd. Teams, stadiums need to stop doing this. It's all just a stupid marketing ploy to get, you know, whatever sideline reporter is going to come in the kitchen and the the quote-unquote chef is going to be like, look at this amazing concoction. Anybody can do this. Like, there's that YouTube channel, Epic Meal Time, which is still making videos, but is, like, definitely flamed out because nobody watches that anymore. Um, Because all they do is just put bacon and cheese on shit now. Like, which is all, like, food at stadiums is, is just, like, take a thing, put bacon and cheese on it. It's, uh, this is, stop doing it. This pisses me off because, like, we talk about, you know, people want to be, like, sustainable and things like that. And this is just, like, the least, like, I think about Winnipeg having, like, a homelessness issue yeah. and, like, a large homeless population. That If you're going to buy the Walby Burger, you should have to – there should be an extra five bucks on there that this goes to, like, some sort of homeless shelter to provide some meals or to the local how YMCA many, or some – like, something. How many people could you feed if you took this apart? It's like – it's like 20 f- – <laughs> yes, yeah, twenty four like, different pieces of meat on it. I I don't understand it. Like that's you know that might be enough for several people to eat, eat in a day. Think about what that forty five bucks does for your local food bank. Like, yeah, yeah, this is just ridiculous. I don't get it. Like I don't get these gimmicks. Um, no. Stop Winnipeg. Stop. I know, I know, I know. Here, our local team, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders Mosaic Stadium, they got that big hot dog. Yeah, two two foot or one and a half foot. Which hot is dog. you know that's fine. It's, it's reasonable, somewhere. but it's reasonable. It's one hot dog. Yeah, it's it's, it's a, a little it's a long hot dog. You know, it's a little. But you know what? I see like six drunk people chowing on it together. That's fine. Yeah, like I, I feel that. See this? Like I can't imagine everything's falling on the ground. It's all over your jersey. You're gonna need to like. Yeah. Did they do it to bring up jersey sales? Because they're hoping people, people just got buy new jerseys, shit stained jerseys. So they're like, hey, maybe we'll buy sell more jerseys. Get a new lucky whitehead jersey. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's what I want, what people want in stadiums, newsflash, is some things I know we have here. We've got um, um, that Vietnamese place in our yeah, stadium. Yeah. You can get vermicelli bowls. Yeah. Um, you got walk box in the stadium, which is nice. Um, got a lot of local stuff. A lot of local stuff. There's a Greek, you got, uh, is it Grecos? Grecos there's is a, there there's too, a Greek yeah. place. You know, there's lots of, lots of good stuff. Um, there is the poutine place, but don't get me started on how I feel about poutine. Okay, every time I went there, I'm not so had season tickets for two years, obviously, with my partner formerly uh, doing the cheer team thing, and I always got poutine because it was right underneath me, yeah, and I would always get it, and I would get two Belgian moons and get my poutine, and the worst thing that I've ever done is not go around the stadium while I had those season tickets. 
and review Mosaic Stadium's food. Like an a la David yeah. Portnoy from Barstool. The only good thing that that guy does. Uh, I better not better not get into him because, yeah. I mean, he's, he's fighting with AOC. I don't want him to take me down and take me for all I'm worth. So. No. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm not. My favorite thing that he does, not the only good thing he does. He does a lot of great things, you know. Uh, my favorite segment of his is obviously the pizza review. So I wish I would have done that. Yeah. Uh, missed opportunity, but yeah, we won't get into poutine. That might be another off that's the rails another thing. Off the rails thing. Um, yeah, it's that is. I feel like that's what people want. I was in Lululemon in in Winnipeg. I was there a couple weeks ago, and the girl says to me, "Yeah, we have the most restaurants per capita." Um, my girlfriend's dad said, um, "You know, every place says that they have the most restaurants per capita, so we don't." And he's like, "Yeah, that could be total bullshit," but. I, I feel like it's true. It feels like it when I'm there. And they have so many good local places. And then you got this monstrosity in there. Um, I hope that they got other food, op- like good food options yeah. that are local there because it's an atrocity. Don't don't buy the Wallby burger. Don't support that lunacy. Um, Blue Bombers, this is your call from three batter minimum. Get rid of it. Don't do it anymore. Um, or if you're going to continue, there's got to be some money going to someone, yeah. someone in need, because it is absolute lunacy yeah. that you are doing this. It's a waste. It's disgusting. Yeah. It's Nobody just, wants this. Just pure gluttony. Nobody, Nobody wants, wants this. No one wants No one, no one asked, asked for, for it. it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know who, who in your marketing department or wherever, what chef came yeah. in and said this is okay, but it's not. It's disgusting. Everybody everybody needs to be the diners, drive-ins, and dives people with the big crazy thing now. It, and you know what? It We don't need it. We just don't need it. Um, that's the end of that rant, I think. Yeah, that's that's it from uh, yeah. Three Batter Minimum, Going Off the Rails, Squib Kick Radio Network. Give them a listen. Yeah. Uh, give our boys, uh, the Shooter Shoot Pod, a listen. Yeah. Think they might be getting a little logo design going on. Uh, maybe they maybe they join the boys on the Squib Kick Radio Network. Yeah, no, Don't can't know. Can't confirm. But, uh, yeah, last, last soundbite uh, is, fuck you, Chris Walby Burger. That's it. Bye.